Hi guys, so today I thought that I would share with you how to knit a pair of fingerless mittens. I think these would be a wonderful Christmas gift and they're just really fun for cozy winter nights. So let's get started. As with all of my projects, I'm going to start with a slip knot by wrapping my yarn around my hand in an X and then pulling this off. This gives me a pretzel shape and I'm going to slip my needle right through the right hand loop. Pulling this tight gives me my first slip knot or cast on stitch. I'm going to create more cast on stitches by wrapping the tail of my yarn around my thumb, bringing the working yarn around my needle, and then sliding that loop from my thumb over the needle and pulling tight. I'm going to do this until there are 48 stitches on my needle. Now that I have all 48 stitches cast on, I'm going to start working in K2 P2 ribbing. So I'm going to knit the first two stitches by sliding my right hand needle from front to back, wrapping my working yarn around and then pulling this loop through. This will give me a knit stitch and I'm going to do that once again. And now to move on to purling, I'm going to bring my working yarn around through the middle so that it's on the front and then I'm going to slip my right hand needle from back to front this time, once again wrapping my working yarn around that needle and pulling that loop through. It's very important to make sure that the yarn is in front when you are purling and in back when you are knitting. So now that I've finished my second purl stitch, I'm bringing my yarn back through the middle to the back of my work. I'm going to resume knitting and do the same thing for 10 rows. Once those 10 rows have been completed, my cuff has also been completed and it's time to start working on the main portion of the mitten. So for this next row, I'm going to set everything up by working a row of knit stitches. And that's all I'm going to do the entire way. For the next row, I'm going to purl and I'm going to do this on every wrong side row or what will end up being the inside of the mitten. Now it's time for the fun stuff. I've knit across 20 stitches which will be the palm of my mitten and now I'm going to knit two for the back of my mitten and now we're going to start cabling. So I'm going to slip the next four stitches off and bring my right hand needle through the two loops closest to my left hand and then going from the front, I'm going to slip those next two onto my left hand needle. Bringing those other two back on, I'm going to knit all four of these stitches. And obviously this would be a little bit easier to understand with a cable needle, but that's just not how I learned. And so I've been doing it this way ever since. I'm going to knit the next four stitches as I normally would and then the next four are going to be another cable. This one is going to face the opposite direction of the one we just did, but I'm going to work it fairly similarly. So I'm going to slip those next four stitches off and bring my left hand needle through the first two and then grab the second two with my right hand needle. And as you can see, this makes the cable go in towards the right rather than the left, which we did the first time. I'm then going to knit all four of these stitches. And then I'm essentially going to repeat the process. So rather than give you all of the cabling instructions because there is a bit more to it than just these rows, I am going to direct you to my blog where you can see all of the cabling instructions and all of that, but I just wanted to kind of show you the basic steps if you get stuck on the written instructions or anything like that. So let's move on to the end of the mitten. As you can see, I have completed the cable on this mitt and it works out to be about six inches from the beginning. I really like how this has turned out, but we do still have to finish it. So to do that, I'm going to work five rows of K2 P2 ribbing, just like we did at the bottom.
and then I'm going to bind off ribwise. So what that means is I'm going to knit the first two stitches as I normally would. And then rather than continue, I'm going to slip my left hand needle through the first loop I knit and pull that off of my right hand needle just right down into the center to bind that stitch off. Then rather than knit, I'm going to bring my yarn to the front and purl the next stitch. I'm just going to kind of continue in this manner until all of my stitches have been bound off. So since we are working in K2, P2 ribbing, the next stitch that I would bind off is once again a purl stitch. So I'm going to purl and drop that first stitch off into the center. Bringing my yarn back, I'm going to knit the next two and so on and so forth. Once all my stitches have been bound off, I have kind of a rectangle shaped like this and then I want to do a similar one for my left hand and this is very, very similar. All I'm doing is moving the cable stitch to the opposite side. So now I'm going to actually do something I haven't done in a knitting video so far and that is show you how I seam things up. And like I have said, I'm not incredibly good at this. I'm still in the learning process myself. But essentially what I do is just go for little tiny loops on each side of my work and for some reason it works better for me to go from the right side. That way I know for certain that my stitches are all lining up and it just seems to work better that way. As you can see I am going from the top down of the mitten and I'm just going to seam up the ribbed portion. The next portion is actually going to be a space for your thumb. As you can see, I'm now seaming from the bottom up, which makes it pretty easy to just kind of slip this on and make sure that the gap that I'm leaving for my thumb is big enough. And I do find that leaving a one and a half to two inch gap seems to be the best route. So there you go. Now you have a nice pair of fingerless mittens that really don't take very long to make either. And I think these would make wonderful Christmas gifts. They're really easy to make and pretty quick. And I would also recommend trying to put small gloves underneath these. It just kind of changes up the look a little bit while still keeping you warm. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know what else you would like to see from me. What other projects are you looking for? I hope you have had an amazing day and I will see you later. Bye.